Welcome to the Highland Husky Cast. I am Brian Burton. Uh, this is our third year with the Highland Husky Cast, and joining me tonight is head football coach Joe Donovan from the Highland Huskies. This is his second year as the Highland football coach, um, and congratulations to being the new assistant uh, athletic director here at Highland. You show you share um, duties with um, Jody Fink. Jody Fink, of course. Yep. So. Absolutely, that's uh, that's a, a great honor yeah. for you to be uh, here as a athletic director. Um, in case nobody's familiar with you, Joe, just uh, give me a little background if you could, please. Well, born and raised in Solon, Iowa. Um, you know, youngest of seven children. Um, had a great high school experience all around. You know, school-wise and athletic-wise, just being in the the grade I was in, the grades above and below, so we had some really good athletes and had some, some good experiences, you know, and being, you know, beating in the semifinals, but, you know, being ranked number one and, you know, didn't lose a whole lot. So, you know, just uh, being around people like that, you know, makes you a little more hungry for winning all the time, but it was just a great experience to be born and raised there, and, you know, it's, uh, you know, so that was always good, and then from there, I ventured to St. Ambrose College and played football for baseball for a year. And um, and I, I went to college for two years. And then after that, I took a little break and then got back into it. And I started my coaching stint here at Highland Lone Tree when they were combined. And um, did it pretty well with them. Yeah, I had a great experience with them with Dan Dickel, the head coach, and Kevin Miller and I were the JV coaches. And my brother Ed Donovan was the, the varsity defensive coordinator. So we took a pretty uh, you know, program wasn't in good shape at the time and turned it into a state runner-up within four years. And so that was a, another great experience and experiencing uh, how to how to turn programs around and how to build them. And then I took my head, first head coaching job after that at Montezuma High School and was there six years or seven years, I believe, and uh, took them to their first state championship game and, uh, and then went to West Serbia for three years and was in the process of building that when I had the opportunity to go to Pekin High School and with a great tradition and you know we we're in the quarterfinals I think three years in a row the last uh, you know I was there five years so it was you know again that program was not very good shape when I got there and I had to kind of turn it you know the, the morale was down but turn it around and get the attitudes back where they need to be and so then I accept this challenge and it was nice to be back in Highland where I had some experience and, and in the area and being from this area it's uh, you know it's going to take it's going to take a lot of patience and a lot of grit and days wondering if you can or you can't, but we'll stay with it. But you're, you're, you're back at Highland again, and, and some of these faces that you see are new. Yeah. Um, some of these faces that are old, some of those kids that uh, you coach, um, they have kids now that are they're coming up through the ranks, and yeah. it'll be an exciting experience to see you um, yeah. develop these kids that are coming up. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about highlights from last year. I know you guys came in with a record of four and five, um, beat teams that you probably should have beat, lost a right. couple of close games, a right. um, couple of blowouts. But uh, I, as I, I watched this year, spent a little bit of time with some practices this year and watched you guys work, and uh, I'm really impressed with what, you, what you've got building right now. And, and you were built. You've always yeah, been a builder. I've always been. You spent yeah. your career building. Yeah. Building teams, and uh, so just off the top of your head right now, what do you think about uh, a little bit about last year and what you got coming up this year? Well, last year it's always tough. It's always tough to be a senior when there's a new coach coming in, new verbiage, you know, maybe new whole numbering, new strategy concepts. So it's always tough to be a senior. And but I, I really thought you know we had four seniors out last year: uh, Spencer Wheeland and Nick Sandberg. You know, two big cogs in that wheel, you know, tacklers and two weight starters, and then the yeah, Tony Oldwin and uh, Trez Lanfair, I think, was the other one. And, uh, you know, so it, it was uh, Tony, Tony was a starter also. So, I mean, we lose um, a lot of tackles, maybe, but this senior class issue that were juniors last year, I think, have bring a lot to the table as far as athletic ability and what they possess. It's just getting them to to believe in what they really possess. And that's, uh, they're better than they are, getting them to believe that they're better than they are because it's in them, they just uh, need reinforcement. And 
it would always help if we had more numbers, but, you know, so we really are concentrating on getting us in shape so we can, uh, you know, withstand some of this early heat in these early games and physically getting them ready so that we can, uh, you know, the pounding that we'll take throughout the year that, you know, maybe we recover more quickly. You already answered my, uh, one of my first questions was about conditioning. I see you guys doing a lot of conditioning and with the small numbers that you guys have, conditioning is going to be key with this team. It will be huge and it's, you know, Jeff Whelan said we put in charge of condition this year and uh, he's just done a great job. The kids aren't real thrilled about it, but let you know, but <laughs> who would when you're out conditioning? <laughs> Nobody's <laughs> fun. Nobody's that's <laughs> right. You know, and I should probably introduce the coaches. You know, Josh Berry, the defensive coordinator, Dan coaches DBs and wide receivers. Jordan Jaspering coaches running backs and outside linebackers. Bailey Donovan coaches O line, D line. And, uh, you know, I have Jeff Whelan who's just helping at practice with conditioning, but also just in different areas. And, um, you know, so it, it's. Uh, and so we, we do, we got some more guys in the staff and I always say the more eyes, the more you can see, which helps these kids. And, uh, you know, we're not big into yelling at kids, but we're big into teaching kids and trying to teach them the game and understanding so they can, you know, get them in the right places so they can make plays. Very good. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about, you have a lot of new starters. You only lost two from last year, yeah. really, you know, in Sandberg and Wheeling, but uh, you've got, uh, you got some returning starters this year that should make a difference, you know, yeah, yeah. and Jake Wood as yeah. your returning quarterback, which makes a big difference. He's learned the system last year, yeah. so that'll it, make a big difference. It'll make a big, it'll make a big difference, and I, I think Jake, you know, returned Jake Wood, and then uh, Bill Burton started in the backfield halfway through the year, but he started out at wide out before that, so there's another key returner, and then across the front line there, you have Blake Donovan, Tyler Hazlett, Matt Honey, um, and uh, Nate Yonkett, I believe, were the other starters on the line last year. And so, you know, we returned quite a few. You got Chase Rapp at wide out, and Trent uh, Leshik was at split in, and, and Trey Leshik had even started both ways for us until he got hurt last year. So we returned a lot of good key players. So, uh, not to interrupt, but how is Trey's, Trey's health then? Is he okay now? Yeah, I haven't seen, you know, I was thinking about it the other day, and I haven't seen anything in his game out here that makes him like he's thinking about it. I think once he got through track season, I think he was fine. And, but, um, you know, so it was, you know, Johnny Pochelle was another individual that started courts both ways last year. Don't forget about Johnny. But, um, yeah, so those are some key starters that we returned. And so we're, we'll depend on them a lot, but... We're in the process of also building some of these younger kids coming along that we can get them breaks in games where these younger kids can come in and get some valuable experience and give these guys a blow and then get them back. And so game. with only your your roster consists of 24 players, is that Well, correct? we're going to have round 30. Yeah, round 30 now. Okay, 30. Yeah. okay. so yeah, you're, you're going to have to have uh, some point in time during a game, you're going to have to, yeah. you know, give a guy a blow, bring another guy yeah. in. Um, talk about any of those kids that, you know, yeah. are not first team, but second team, but they're going to move in and just get some blows? Well, I think one kid that'll be key right away is, uh, you know, Corey Stewart, a sophomore, will start a tight end for us right now. Uh, done a nice job. and But he's in a class with some kids that, you know, Trey Leshick's going to start a tailback, who's, you know, only a sophomore also. But uh, but in that sophomore class, there's some really good players. Uh, they're maybe a little bit undersized, and maybe they're what we want, but they have grit, they're tough. And they'll play. And then you're talking Jordan Sosa, uh, Brady Hahn, who's uh, and look really good at inside linebacker. He'll play some running back also. Brady, uh, Corey Stewart, Dan Burton, and Brody Burton both uh, know multiple positions defensive end, defensive line, linebacker, tight end. And both of them have done real nice so far this preseason. And we're going you know, to look forward to them guys playing on the field. So, you know, it's from there you're going to see, I don't know if you'll see Cole Addison, a freshman, maybe Zach Leshick a little bit. Given blows, but I don't know how you know how much playing time necessary. You know, some of it will be earned, but uh, the, you know, Cole Absent really gets after it, likes the game of football. So we think as the season goes on, the more he can help us. So, but it's just not overwhelming him at first, and, sure. and just working him into it. So I don't want to set it up to be where he gets frustrated. So it's I want to keep him hungry. Yeah, exactly. Um, I want to mention one thing: new helmets this year. Love them. Those things are awesome. You know, it was one of those things, uh, I was a flat black guy before, and but I thought after the first year, just a subtle change that maybe uh, 
it goes back to the old hiding days. And I know back in the old days they wore white helmets and they maybe had a different mask, but um, we kind of went with some updated chrome stickers and metallic paint just to kind of, you know, for the, the, the kids like that stuff. But it's, so it's back to the white and I thought maybe bring some more pride and, and just kind of get back to, you know, when Highland had some of those really good teams, uh, they wore white helmets and just a little more pride. A little bling. A little bling. <laughs> well, I know when Hayden Fry first came to Iowa, he uh, he contacted the Pittsburgh Steelers about uh, their uniforms, and I think I believe Chuck Noel was the coach at the time, and he actually sent Hayden Fry Terry Bradshaw's uniform, and that's what we copied, or that's not what we copied, but that's what Iowa copied the uh, the uniforms offered. They were a winning team, and they put a good product on the field, and Hayden decided that's what he had to do here at Iowa. And he did it for, you know, a number, a number of, years, of years, and it, it made a difference. We're going to jump from the helmet yes. to uh, new helmet to new district here. we got yes. several new teams in our district this year. Yeah, new teams, and it's always going to be an exciting time, but yet it's, you know, you know, the new teams in our non-district, we'll play Danville, who we've, re you know, we played in the past, uh, but we'll add Wessler be a 2 way school to our second non-district game. And not sure how the state scheduled that one because it's not one I put on our card to play. So that was a little bit of a surprise. But in our district, it'll be, you're still looking at Iowa City Regina, who's unanimously ranked number one again. And then, you know, so you're, you know, we have Wilton as a new player, LM, a new team, uh, Van Buren will be a new team, uh, Wapo. So some teams we haven't seen so much of in the past, uh, other than Regina and Danville. But, um, excited about it. I think, you know, I like to think that we can scratch with all of them, you know, get down there and fight with all of them, and Regina being the one that's, you know, obviously the role they're on, but we'll worry about them when we get there, but I'd like to think that these kids will compete with every team on our schedule. Yeah, it's one game at a time. Yeah. You know, it, it, it has to be. I, you and I played each other. Yeah, right. right. You know, yeah. And uh, I, in the back of my mind, I was always, you know, some of them was the game I was looking for. Right. And, and, Right or wrong, but right. you know players do that. But that's your job to coach those players to say, "Hey, look, you know we've got this team here. Let's let's go out and beat this team. All right. Make a statement. Go to the next team. You know, uh, when we played, like we were undefeated in the conference. You were under, undefeated in the conference, and you guys ended up winning. You know, twenty-one to zero that game. You know, and uh, it was a heck of a game. But uh, it's always one of those things to keep kids from looking ahead because. So many things change from week to week, whether it be an injury, uh, you know, with this new uh, concussion things that come down the road. I mean, things can really change. I mean, there's eligibility issues, there's injuries, there's all kinds of things that come into play. So you just can't, you can't, you can know who you play down the road, but you really can't get that far ahead. Right. Strategizing, you just have to take that game in front of you. And, you know, you're only as good as that last one. So, you know, that's what we have to focus on is that one in front of us and and worry about being one and over every week. All right. Thank you, Joe. Before we leave, um, do you have any last comments? And uh, we're going to shut it down here for just a couple seconds. And so we're going to come back and regroup, and we're going to meet your uh, assistant coaches. So, Well, I'd just like to say thank you to you and, and for what you do at Husky Cast. I know you put a lot of time in. And uh, doing these little things like this, I think, are great. And, Anytime we can get our name out there in the community and what, what sport it is, I think it's always great. But the people behind the scenes doing that volunteer work, we, we appreciate it. <laughs> All right. I'd like to get Bailey to shut that off. We'll be done and we'll be right back.